Hi, today's video we put together a training specific on how to invest £100,000 in UK buy to let. Now this is mainly towards people that are new to property but have got £100,000 or access to £100,000 to start building a property portfolio. Now you must have relatively good credit file or credit score to build a property portfolio. Certainly no CCJs or missed payments because lenders don't particularly like those. So if you've got an average to excellent credit score, then this could be a good model if you've got £100,000 or access to £100,000. Now I'm gonna put some more training videos together over the coming months on how to invest X amount of money depending on how much you've got. So we're gonna to start today with £100,000. So if I was starting afresh, this is how I would use £100,000 to invest. Again, I can't give financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but I can tell you what I would do and what I have done in the past with this type of money. And particularly in a very safe fashion, building a nice safe buy to let property portfolio, whether you want a pension or passive income, or just you know that security or safety net if you're ever out of work and you want to make sure you've got passive income coming in every month. There's no better feeling than not working and getting cash flow coming in, which is brilliant, brilliant position to be in. So let's show you how I would invest safely £100,000. In today's market, we're in July 2023, where the world's going crazy, interest rates are going up a bit, people are going crazy over it, um, and also inflation's high. But regardless from all the noise that's going on, I'm gonna show you how I would do it, and the numbers still work in with this model in this particular climate we're in today. So one thing we do teach people who join us on the partner program is where to put your focus. So this is called the wealth hierarchy. So if you're somebody who wants to leave a job, for example, you'd start at the bottom and we'd help you do that using cash flow strategies. But for this video today, we're talking about assets, building up an asset base. So we're gonna start and focus right at the top because you've got 100,000 pounds. It's a nice pot of capital to get going and build a property portfolio. So with £100,000, you may just go and buy one property. You could do that, no problem, rent it out, that's great. With our model, how it's different from that is we are a big advocate of getting properties at a deep discount. So what I mean by that is you would find a property and you get it negotiated down in price. And this is how you de-risk building a property portfolio. You don't have to pay full price. In fact, it's very risky if you buy properties at full market value because if there is a property crash then you're going to be in negative equity straight away whereas if you buy properties at a discount straight away and the property market did fall then you've got that safety net and that barrier to protect you also because of this model it also enables us to extract a lot of our capital and this is what we're going to show you to do today it's really clever now usually we're getting properties at anywhere from a 15 to 20 percent discount from the market value. Now let's be really pessimistic today and say that you just get 15% off, not 20. So we're gonna work this modeling today off just 15% off a property's value. So what we're gonna assume is the property is worth 95,000 pounds, but you've done a really good job of negotiating them and you're gonna pick them up for 80,000 pounds each. Now these numbers may vary, obviously when you start building a portfolio, by a few thousand pounds or 10,000 pounds here and there. Uh, but I wanna do this for this modeling purpose to keep it super simple so you can get your head around our particular business model. Now some properties you might get 15% off, some you might get 25% off, but averaged out you will get 15 to 20% discount. And I'll show you as we go why this is extremely important. So for this example, just to recap, the properties are gonna be worth they're worth today 95,000 pounds. Now you've secured them, each one, at 80,000 pounds. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna buy these properties with something called bridging finance. Now I've done videos on this in the past, so you can go and check them out at some point in the future. But bridging finance, contrary to the belief, is not that risky as long as you know what you're doing with it. Now, people get bridging out for big developments and building houses, and for me that's massive risk because I don't particularly understand all that. 
I do understand how to invest it safely in buy to let properties though, because we're getting properties at a deep discount. So you know that you can pay that bridge off if you had to, if you're desperate and you had to put it through an auction you or, or something like that, you know you're gonna be able to pay that bridging finance off because you've got the properties at 15 or 20% discount. And that's how you're de-risking yourself using products like bridging. Now bridging is brilliant because it's fast, it's fluid, you can complete very quickly and they're not as picky as normal lenders. So they can be a lot more flexible. You can buy properties that are mortgageable, for example. They don't necessarily ask you where your deposit comes from. As long as it's legal, um, they ask you to show you where your funds are and you have to show bank statements. But mortgage lenders can be really sensitive to where your deposits come from, whereas bridging lenders are a lot more flexible. They're not too bothered where it's come from because they know that you've got your skin in the game and they also charge. And your skin in the game, by the way, is your deposit, which we'll come on to. Um, but it's it's a really good way of buying properties quickly because this is how we get properties at deep discount. Now, if you were to say, I'll just buy them with a mortgage, it's gonna to take too long. The vendor is not gonna be happy with taking a big discount, but this is how we can get them at such a discount because we're buying quickly with bridging finance. Now, you're as good as a cash buyer as well, which is speed, and certainty and this is how we get them at such a good price and there's nothing wrong with getting properties at 15 to 20 percent off by the way it's completely uh, normal for us and um, we provide a very good service a fast clean service for a quick sale in return for a discount we're not certainly holding anyone to, to ransom or saying they have to accept a deep discount or anything like that there's nothing untoward we're very honest with our offers um, and but we want them at a discount especially today in uncertain times want to make sure we're getting props at a really good price so let's go through the figures on each one so you're going to put a deposit in because you're going to buy these properties at 15 percent off so they're worth 95 and you're buying them for 80,000 pounds now the 60,000 pounds represents the bridging finance that will advance you 75 percent of the property's value so you have to put in the same as a mortgage deposit generally, which is about 25% deposit. So in this case, you're putting in 20,000 pounds deposit. Then you've got some legal fees, and then you've got some stamp duty, land tax, so you pay when you buy a property generally, unless there's exemptions, you have to pay a tax to the government, uh, which is currently 3% uh, when you're buying uh, a pro an additional properties for your portfolio. Again, there are exemptions, so you need to be aware of those because you can actually save yourself quite a lot of money with certain, certain um, uh, exemptions, such as probate, property that have been empty for a certain period of time, qualify, uh, chain breaks. So these are things that you can look into and it can save you a lot of money if you, were, if you do get an exemption. There's no refurb needed on any of these properties for this example, and the fees. So you will need some fees for bridging, 1% uh, in and 1% out typically. So we've just uh, lumped that together as a 2% fee and it's £1,200 per property. So you buy, a buy these properties on a bridge really quickly. So just to recap on some of this stuff, if you're 100,000, you could obviously go and buy a property or get one deeply discounted property and then you've not got any further borrowing. You don't have to worry about bridging finance and all the interest and all that kind of stuff but you're gonna be growing much slower. Whereas with 100,000 pounds, you can split that money across multiple properties and really accelerate your asset base really quickly and get your passive income coming in. So this is how I would invest the 100,000 pounds. It does depend on your risk profile, but this is what I would do. So with all those fees on each property added together, you're into these properties for 24,600 each which equates to 98,400. Now, you do need access to other capital on the side because it is always good to have a contingency. I would say when you've got a significant portfolio, 1% of each property's value is a rough figure to have as a slush fund or accessible funds in case the boiler breaks or you need to put a new roof on a property or anything drastic like that, you've got to have access to capital. It doesn't mean it has to be in your bank account, it could be access to money on a credit card, something like that, but you need access to a bit of a slush fund because operating properties, there are some expenditure you need to be aware of. But this is how I would use the £100,000. You've invested now 98400 in four buy-to-let properties. 
So let's have a look at the income and the expenditure. So you've got your four properties there. Now each one, we, we invest in properties that represent a gross yield of between seven and 10%. So these are for about a 9% sort of yield, gross yield, which is uh, very achievable. So each property rents out for 750 pounds. By the way, as I'm going, if you don't understand any of the terminology I'm using, feel free to drop a comment in the box and I'll always try and come back at some point in the future and answer your questions. So each property rents for £750 per property. Now you've got a letting agent. We don't manage any of our properties because it's just not a job we'd enjoy managing tenants. We just enjoy doing the deals and having free time to do as we wish. And that's why we like property because if you get someone else to manage it, you get the passive income from it. So the letting agent's gonna charge you typically about 10%. You can get a good deal because you're giving them multiple properties so you can get the price down. So 75% is about 10%, sorry, 75 pounds per property is about 10% of your gross rental income on each property. Your running costs, we allocate about 45 pounds. This covers gas safety checks, void periods, and some of the other uh, costs that you do get over the year operating a buy-to-let property. But buy-to-let properties, they're very low hassle, low risk, and this is why I like them versus other strategies like HMOs are a bit more intensive, tenants moving in and out. But these, you can pretty much buy them, hand them to a letting agent and almost forget about them. There are the odd occasion, you're gonna get maintenance issues and things like that. The next cost you need to be aware of is the bridging cost. So the bridging cost, so it's short term finance is bridging. So they're gonna lend you this money for six to 12 months. Now it's a stepping stone to end finance, which is like a normal mortgage product for like a 20, 30 year mortgage, for example. So you're going from six, 12 month bridge to a normal product. Um, and, and in that time, they're gonna charge you appropriate interest and they feel it's, it's obviously more risk to them. They're lending to you, they don't know a lot about you and uh, the checks are a lot less than a normal mortgage. So there's more risk on their side, in which case they're gonna charge you a bit more interest than a normal mortgage company. So you're gonna be paying temporarily 510 pounds per month per property. But remember the gross income is 750, after all your costs, you still got a net surplus profit of 120 pounds per property. Now that adds up to 480 pounds for all four as passive income. Now I won't worry too much about these figures because this is short term. This is only over six to 12 months. It's a stepping stone to the end finance. So I'm not too concerned about this, but it is good that you've still got some surplus income after your debt service. So what you need to be aware of is something called the six month rule. So you've bought your properties on a bridge and you think, right, I need to refinance them to pay the bridge off. Because remember you're using the bridging, just as a reminder, to buy the properties really quickly and to prove to the seller that you can justify a discount on the purchase price because you can complete really fast because mortgages generally if you were to buy the mortgage it's going to take too long um, and it takes away the unique selling point of what we do and it also we need that discount because this is where our business model enables us to keep buying more and more properties and getting our cash out of the deals now to do that you're gonna to have to wait six months generally now on these examples you're definitely gonna to have to wait six months because you've not done any refurbishment to the properties the fact you've bought them cheap a mortgage lender will just say, well, that's the new market value. So in order to refinance within six months, which is possible, it's just a guideline, but the caveat is you have to show that you've done some work to the property, quite significant work as well. Um, and I've done it several times, but generally you're gonna have to wait six months. Now let's face it, six months goes really quick anyway, so it's not a problem and you're gonna get your money or most of your money back out, um, which I'm about to show you now. So just be aware of the six month rule Really important you understand that you've got to wait six months generally to refinance. And then in six months time, you'll use a mortgage broker, that's the best place to go, to get access to all the mortgage products that are on the market and say to them, I want to refinance off my bridge, I wanna pay back my bridges and I want to um, now refinance at the market value of the properties. Now each property is worth 95,000 pounds that's what it was at the start because you got them at a really good price. Now, if you remember, you owe the bridge 
bridging company £60,000 per property, but the bank are willing to lend you 75% of the actual open market value, which is the 95000 So there's actually a surplus left. The difference between paying off the 60 and getting 71 gives you a surplus of £11,000 per property. Cash back which comes back on completion into your bank account. It's a great feeling to get that cash back, replenishes your, sa your savings and de-risks the asset because most people aren't doing that. They're buying props at full price and they're locking up all the money. They've got to work really hard to save for another deposit where you don't have to do that with this model. You're getting most of your cash back so you can keep buying more property. So you're going to leave money left in the property because it, if you want to get all of your money back, you've got to get like a 30 or 35% discount. You can do the figures yourself on this, um, but you can see why you'd end up leaving money in because you're getting, in this case, 15% discount. But the mortgage lender, they're going to require you to put 25% uh, deposit into each property. So that's why you ended up leaving a bit more money in each property. It's very difficult to give you the exact calculations on this screen because there's lots of different... Uh, calculations we could put on the screen but this is just to summarize so you're going to cash back eleven thousand pounds per property when you refinance them and then you're going to pay back your bridge and then you're going to leave in the property thirteen thousand six hundred in each property so that so your initial cash pot was ninety eight thousand four hundred in and then you've got forty four thousand of that money back in your bank account now the deeper the discount if you get twenty percent then this is only going to go up and you're gonna get more of your cash back out. Now I encourage you to do a bit of an average. You'll get some properties maybe 15% off and then some back at 25% off, some back at 20. But average doubt they're gonna be between 15 and 20% discount. It's uh, this is just for financial modeling and just giving you an understanding of the blueprint that we follow to build a portfolio. So once you're refinanced. You're, you've also got the same amount of rental income coming in because you rented them out when you're on the bridge and that's a benefit. As soon as you buy them, you rent them out straight away, you get the cash coming in and it covers the bridging costs, which is brilliant. So you've got the tenants in, still paying 750 per month. Now the letting agents, we hand all our properties to letting agents, we don't want to manage them. There's loads of red tape with lettings and legislation's constantly changing. So give them to them, the experts and we can focus on doing more deals, the things we enjoy doing, or just having time with our family, however you choose. But that's why we're in property. So it provides passive income. So handing them to a letting agent, you get your passive income every month. Now your running costs per property are around about 45 pounds. This factors in things like your gas safety check and a few other compliance things each year. Your mortgage costs. Now your bridging costs were about five, 10 per month, but your bridging, uh, so your mortgage costs are only 333 because your interest rate is much lower on a mortgage product so your cash flow is going to go up so your net cash flow per property is now 297 pounds per property now generally this could be like fixed rate a fixed rate deal it could be like a five year fixed if you if you're worried about interest rates continuing to go up you might choose to get a five year fixed or you may choose to get a tracker speak to your mortgage broker see what's right for you Again, depends on your risk profile. But your net income combined is £1,188 for this portfolio. Nice little portfolio. You're not going to be able to retire on £1,188. I appreciate that. But the point being is you're going to get most of your cash back out and you're certainly going to get a much higher return than you are where it is perhaps in the bank at the moment. And that's the next part I want to touch on. So the returns you're going to get from an aerial view and a summary of this portfolio is you started with your investment of 98,400 you got cash back of 44,000 now you've got income remember you had a surplus income where you had it on the bridge of about was it 120 pounds per month per property something like that so it equates to 2,880 because I did calculations before and that's the extra income you've had back on top so remember that's that's all on top as extra income. The funds you've tied up into the property and you've left in is 54,400 and 
The cash flow you're now getting off the portfolio is £1,188 per month, which equates to £14,256 net per year, which you get on autopilot every month, whether you go to work or not, you're going to get this income. It's a really powerful thing and this is why I love property because you get that income every month whether you've got to work or not, it always comes in. There's going to be ups and downs, obviously you're going to get maintenance issues, you might get an issue with a tenant, but generally they're very low risk. So the return on your capital employed, this is a metric I love to measure because it's the only one that's the most tangible. Gross yields are great to give you a, a metric of if a property is the right kind of property to go for. Um, but there's other metrics I like to measure when buying a property. And one of the main ones is return on capital employed. So in real terms, getting that money out of the bank, getting into a property, what, how much is that money making for me? And it's going to make, on this portfolio, 26% return on capital. Now, I don't know any bank account that pays this. If you know a bank account that pays 26%, let me know in the comments below. Um, but 26% is huge return, and it only goes up. Uh, when you get deeper discounts and some deals you will. So this is a very average type portfolio. You could get much higher returns on capital employed. There's a bit more risk, you might argue, than taking the money out of the bank. Obviously that's subjective, won't get into that. But taking the money out of the bank and putting it into a property, you could argue you've got now a property, you've got to manage it and you look after it. Obviously we're giving it to letting agents to look after, but obviously it's an extra responsibility. But I can tell you after holding properties for my first property bought over 15 years ago now, that's how long ago it is. In that time, all my buy to lets I bought, they've been very low low hassle, low risk, just given to letting agents. And uh, yeah, we've had the, like I say, maintenance problems and stuff from time to time uh, and challenges. But um, generally, they've been hassle free and much higher returns than leaving it in the bank. Now we've not even factored in, don't forget, that's just the return on the capital that's put into the deal. But you miss, you, well, we're missing out here that you're getting a capital appreciation as well. So you're going to get capital growth and that rent's also going to increase. Now you might be thinking about interest rates as well. Right now interest rates have gone up. They're still at record lows. If you look at the, you know, the peaks in the 80s when they were sort of 17%, it's still very cheap to borrow, borrow money, but everybody's been used to such low rates for so long, the, the, the people get a bit nervous because the rates are going up, but there's still, and you can see even with the high rates, because we've factored these rates off real time, off 5.5% uh, refinance mortgage rates, and that still gives you a 26% return on capital growth, uh, on your, sorry, on your capital employed, and you've got capital appreciation on those assets as well as they go up in value. And when you refinance, as they go up in value, it's all tax-free cash. There's so many benefits to buying these properties. Now it's going to take you 45 months to break even with the cash flow. So if you add up all that cash, it's going to take you 40, uh, 45 months to get all of your cash back out. And that means then you've got all your 100, well, 98,400 back and you can just start again. Now you might not want to wait that long. The surplus you've got back, the cash back, the 44,000 plus the 2,880, you might decide to use that to buy some more properties and keep this blueprint and this cycle going just to keep buying and adding to your portfolio and this is where it snowballs and compounds it gets really exciting and just to finish off this is how to build property in this climate it's completely de-risk very low risk because what could go wrong you know right if if uh, the market crashes then you've already bought them cheap you're only going to lose if you sell um, and you're not going to do that and you're not going to lose anyway because you've already bought them at a discount so you know probably come out of break even if there was a crash if you got caught in one. But you can't sit on your hands and think, oh, I'm not gonna buy because I'm just gonna wait to see if it crashes. Well, as people have been waiting, I've heard investors saying they've been waiting for the last 10 years for things to crash, well, it hasn't. It will happen at some point, but you can't predict it. So just carry on buying and building your portfolio as long as you're getting really good returns and you've got the long-term view in mind. Also with rents going up massively as well so interest rates going up but also rents are also going up as well so it means it's protecting our cash flow margins as we go and then when interest rates start to come back down or level off then then rents aren't going to come back down they're going to stay at that level so you're going to get higher rents and higher cash flow and this is really the best times to be buying property so that's really it for the how to invest one hundred thousand pounds uh, series on a training video today. I just wanted to share with you that those details. We've gone into quite a lot of detail there, but obviously, if you've got further questions, drop a, a comment in the box below. 
Uh, get in touch with us if you want to talk with us about joining the partner program. We'll work close with you to build a portfolio, but work your way through the wealth hierarchy and make sure that you're not wasting time and you're not making uh, silly mistakes that could cost you a lot of money and make sure you're buying the right properties.